Hello again, everyone, and welcome to this lesson on arc length and sector area. But first, let's just talk about circles. Every circle starts out with a center point and a radius. If we have those two basic things, we can loop that radius around 360 degrees and form a circle. And we know that the length of the outside of any circle is called its circumference. Where in any circle is equal to 2 pi times the length of the circle's radius. We also know that the space contained within the circle is called its area. For any circle, area is equal to pi times the radius squared, since we measure area in square units. Now with those familiar circle properties in mind, let's go ahead and ask the question, what if we didn't want the whole circumference of a circle? What if we only wanted the length of a portion of it? In this case, we wanted the length of an arc AB. Now if we know the length of the radius of the circle, and we also know the measure of the angle that intercepts the arc, in this case arc AB, we can use what's called the arc length formula to find the length of that arc AB. Now, what if I wanted to find the area of just a portion of the circle, just one sector? Again, if I know the measure of the central angle within that sector and the length of the radius, I can use the sector area formula to find this area. So let's take a break for a sec and talk about pizza. We can think of sector area, like how much cheese would be needed to cover the surface of two slices of pizza, not the entire pie. An arc length is like finding the curved length of the crust on a few slices, not the entire pie. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our first example here. We have circle P shown below, and we know that the measure of angle KPL is 120 degrees, the diameter JL equals 24 centimeters long, and we want to find the length of arc KL. Now here's why you're going to use the arc length formula to answer this question. We want to find the length of KL, so that we want to find that curved distance on the outside, not the area of the inside. So now to use that formula, I need two pieces of info. I need the measure of the central angle theta, and I need the length of the radius. That's going to be our R value. We already know that angle KPL equals 120 degrees, so that's our value for theta. We also know that the diameter is 24 centimeters long. Divide that by 2 gives us our radius of 12 centimeters. And now we are ready to substitute those values into the arc length formula. Replace theta with 120. Replace r with 12. And then we can evaluate. So 120 times 12 equals 1440. And 1440 divided by 180 equals 8. Now in terms of pi, that arc length is just 8 pi. We can evaluate 8 pi to approximately 25.1 centimeters. That is the curved length of arc KL. So for our next example, we have circle K shown below. We know that line KC is a radius whose length is 5 centimeters long. We also know that angle AKC is 117 degrees and we want to find the area of the green shaded region. Now we're going to be using sector area formula for this question because we want to find the area of one sector, one portion of the inside of that circle. So the information that we need is the measure of theta, the central angle within that sector, and we also need r, the length of the radius of the circle. We already were told that angle AKC has a measure of 117 degrees. However, that's not the angle that we want. But we should notice that angle AKB, the angle that we do want, is its supplement. So to find this angle, we do 180 minus 117, and we get 63 degrees for theta. And we were already told that line KC is a radius with a length of 5 centimeters, so our R value is going to be 5. The last thing we need to do is substitute. Replace theta with 63 and replace R with 5. And now we can evaluate 63 times 5 squared is the same as 63 times 25, which equals 1575. Then divide that by 360. This is equivalent to 35 pi over 8, or approximately 4.4 centimeters squared, the area of the sector shaded in green. 